This AI-generated image went viral back in May. It was reshared more than 46 million times across social media platforms, a symbol of solidarity with Palestinians following a horrific Israeli bombing in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. One of the deadliest bombings in Rafah of the entire war. People were burned alive in the attempts. What Israel said was a tragic mistake was widely seen as the work of a careless military at best and a deliberate strategy of mass murder at worst. In a parallel narrative universe, however, the online anguish and outrage and that viral image, they were the problem, not Israel's bombing. That if Hitler had an Instagram account, far more many Jews would have been killed in the Holocaust. People are just sharing content irresponsibly and saying, all eyes on Rafa, where were your eyes for, since the 7th of October? This is Hen Mazig, one of a league of online influencers who say they speak for the cause of Zionism. When things escalated in Rafa, I think that a lot of us were afraid because people are susceptible to misinformation that is being directed at Israel and at Jewish people. So often when we see hate speech about Israel, it's hidden in a facade of criticism, but it's not really criticism to call Israelis baby killers. That's an anti-Semitic trope from the Middle Ages, to say that the Jewish state is targeting um, civilians. It's, a, it's an anti-Semitic trope. So I think that's why a lot of Jewish people specifically were really concerned to see this unfolding. Israel's assault on Rafa continued in defiance of an order from the International Court of Justice. Today, Rafa lies in ruins. However, Zionist influencers argue that Israel is under pressure in a way it has never been before, and that the country and its actions are chronically misunderstood. We've been made to believe that uh, we're wrong when, when we're not, we're definitely not. Mazig has nearly 550,000 social media followers. He writes op-eds, is frequently seen on TV, and delivers speeches, including at university campuses where so much activism takes place for both Israel and Palestine. Mazig is part of a new breed of pro-Israeli activists doing what is called Hasbara. It's the Hebrew word for explanation, and it's what the Israeli state calls public diplomacy. The thing about Hasbara is that it's something that the Israeli state has used for decades to address itself to a liberal or progressive Western audience. The IDF does exactly what you would expect of a professional army of a democratic state. And what's happened as Israel has kind of revealed itself increasingly to the rest of the world, at no time more so than during the genocide in Gaza, it has needed to work harder and harder to keep trying to co-opt these same Western liberal progressive audiences. Jewish women come from a long lineage of strong women. And now I'm about to meet the first ever female-led operational tank unit. <clears throat> Israel has always had a strong Hasbara effort on social media. They have to propagandize and justify their massacre on the world stage. They are no longer trying to sell a series of military checkpoints or seemingly contested apartheid or a daily blockade of Gaza that lasted 16 years and continues. What they are trying to sell right now is a full-blown genocide. In the past year of the war on Gaza, online Hasbara has been in overdrive. In the first two weeks of the war alone, Israel spent $7.1 million on YouTube ads. Armed Hamas terrorists infiltrated into Israel via a ground invasion. Israel's Directorate of Public Diplomacy, an arm of the Prime Minister's office, has made a big play for celebrity influencers to present the state's position to foreign audiences. American actress Julia Hart was invited to meet Israeli President Isaac Herzog. Hamas goes underground to kill. Israel goes underground to, to save. To save. There's also U.S. actor Michael Rappaport. Good evening to the millions of viewers at home and the 134 Israeli hostages who are watching us from the Hamas tunnels in Gaza. Another personality is Mosab Hassan Youssef, a Palestinian Zionist known in the West as the son of Hamas, since his father was a founding member of the group. Both Rappaport and Youssef have joined Israel's post-war Hezbollah campaigns for a more polished, globally acceptable set of Zionist voices. A new class of online Hezbollahist has emerged during this war. So 
Pro-Israel social media influencers like Han Mazig, like Noah Tishbi, like Nusayr Yassin, the creator of Nas Daily, none of them really claim that they work directly for the Israeli government. They are propagandists, but ultimately they distance themselves from the Israeli government. They are Zionists. They believe in the ethno-nationalist project, and they believe that people are just Jew haters, and they serve the purpose of convincing not people who are pro-Palestine, but of convincing other Jews, especially in the West, that people hate us and people are lying about us. It is our job to stop it by spreading the truth about Israel. And that truth is something you can find right here on my social media feed. They are working to kind of appeal to a Western demographic that they're mirroring back in a way. Queer people in, in, in the Western world may look for somebody who's queer in Israel, or women in the Western world can look at somebody like Tishbi and say, oh look, there's an Israeli woman, she, you know, she's like me. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Pride from my city of Ooh. Tel Aviv. So we look at the video of, of Tishbi um, speaking at the Pride Festival in Tel Aviv. Are you proud to be gay? Are you proud to be Jewish? Are you proud to be Zionist? What she's trying to do is say to be Zionist is to be progressive and liberal and tolerant and open. And what's being implied there is that the Arab world is homophobic, is repressive. Of course, the irony here is, as soon as you go five minutes away from Tel Aviv, you're in a much more forbidding, in this case, Jewish fundamentalist hinterland of the Israeli state, where homophobia is rife, you know, as rife as it is anywhere in the rest of the world, if not more so. Throughout the war on Gaza, the narratives from Israel's spokespeople, both official and unofficial, have been challenged by images and reports from within the war zone. While international journalists have been locked out by Israel, Palestinian journalists have been relentless and their reports have been corroborated by humanitarian workers and doctors who have emerged from the Strip with horrific accounts of a genocide in progress. This network has provided the kind of coverage of this war that no other media outlet has. It's what led to Al Jazeera being banned in Israel in May this year. It's the reason why so many Israeli spokespeople accuse this channel of being pro-Hamas. And it's why Mazig was very anxious about speaking to us for this report. I'm aware of uh, how some of my comments are, might be distorted, but it was important for me to, to come and speak to you because I was hoping that at least you'll give a fair representation. And I, I know Al Jazeera is funded by Qatar, but it's still important for me to try and give you the, uh, the benefit of the doubt that I hope you would represent my message. It is a message about unity, unity of Israelis, Palestinians, unity of the entire Middle East and peace. I think the job of being an Israeli has bars since the seventh has been a Sisyphean task. And that's because Israel has made it impossible for them to succeed in their PR efforts. You can't have day after day, tragedy after tragedy that goes live on social media and then is celebrated by Israelis on their own platforms and then have somebody say, oh, no, Israel's good and Israel is, is doing its best. So even though the progressive liberal uh, Hasbarists are trying to present this, this alternate image to the Western world, they're facing a competition that they can't win because the gruesome reality of what the Israelis are doing in Gaza is far more powerful in terms of narrative, in terms of image, in terms of video, in terms of sound even. You can't turn that off. Once you've seen those sites, you can't make them go away. Thanks for watching. Now hit that like button and leave us a comment to let us know what you think about anything that we covered this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Does anyone really call it X? Facebook and Instagram for updates from the show. Links are in the description.